Let's talk about the strategy for perfect pricing and how to maximize your earnings. Think of the web design world like a vast ocean, okay? And there's loads of boats out there all offering to take you from one island to another, okay? They're all the web designers in a boat. Now you could jump onto any particular boat, but is that boat going to cater for your services? So I'm a business and I want a web design that's going to do X, Y, Z for me. Am I going to just go, well, I'll pick the closest boat? Or am I going to try and see which boat, which web designer can provide exactly what I want. And this is where I'm leading on to nicheifying. Now having a niche service or industry doesn't work for everyone. And sometimes it's a good idea to kind of discover and find out where are you going to get the most clients and what can you do really, really well. When you're starting off, you may want to decide on what particular industry are you going to work with. So maybe you're going to build websites for doctors or accountants. Learn to understand the problems they're having and what kind of websites they are going to want. You know, appointments, booking systems. Do they need a payment structure in there? Can you offer all of that? Don't pretend you can do it. You're going to know what problems you can solve. So let's say you're going to do an accountant website. You are now going to stand on your boat in the ocean saying, hey, jump on this boat because you over there who want to build a doctor's website, I've got examples or I can help you out with solving your problems. What you don't want to be, and again, I'm going to contradict myself because sometimes people start off doing this before they start to nicheify, is a jack of all trades. Because you might say, yeah, I can build a website for you. Hey, doctor, yeah, jump on, I'll do it. And then the doctor says, I want an appointment system. System. And all of a sudden, you kind of go, I can't do that. Look, here's a dinghy, jump over and back into the ocean. You don't want to hurt your reputation by not providing what you promised. Let me give you another example. Back onto doctors. You have specialists and you have generalists. So you've got a problem, right? I've got a problem with my elbow. And I go to the generalist doctor. He might look at my elbow and go, yeah, I think there's a problem. And then they refer me to the specialist. And you know that when you go to a specialist, there will be a price to pay for that because they are the specialist. But I now know that if I go to the generalist and he might be able to refer me to someone to sort out my elbow, but there's a waiting list of one to two months and, you know, my elbow's really hurting me and I really want to get it sorted, or I could pay a premium or a little bit more to go to the specialist who can sort me out, who can solve my problems, I'm more likely to pay to go and get the problem sorted. And that doctor, that specialist, knows they're in demand. They know that people want to come to them to get problems fixed. That should be you as the web designer. When you become the go-to expert and the market leader and people want their page speed performance improved or looked at or assessed or inspected, they're going to come to you because they know that you might be able to help them out. And when you get to that level, your prices need to reflect that. You can't keep charging $50 per website or service because that's what the non-experts are charging. So what differentiates you from the non-expert? You need to be triplicating, quadrupling your prices upwards. Of course, don't over overprice yourself outside of the market as well. So look at what other people are charging. But if you are confident in yourself and you can back up what you state and you believe in yourself, then start pricing accordingly to set yourself apart from others and where you lie or stand in the industry.